Okay, thank you very much. We're going to move on now. Um, we've got an interesting gentleman now who has come to talk with us. Um, he is a Norwegian who has sold two companies. He's just listed one on the Swedish Stock Exchange, and he is now living in San Francisco. And I was just asking him what he thinks about living in San Francisco compared to living in Scandinavia, and he said um, it's pretty good. So he's going to talk to us. He is the CEO of Meltwater Group. Please give a round of applause to Mr. Jörn Liesigen. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Okay. Uh, my name is Jörn Liesigen. I've been the CEO uh, from Meltwater. Heute möchte ich gern über die Zukunft des Board Zukunft des Boards sprechen. Uh, mein Deutsch ist leider nicht so gut. Uh, darum möchte ich gerne meine Präsentation auf Englisch halten. Okay? Verstehen Sie? Okay. I'll just get my computer up and running here. Okay, so the topic I will speak about today is the unfair advantage of the new boardroom. So it's a pretty ambitious topic, and fundamentally, my presentation is really built around three propositions. The first one is that how to run a company will change, and it will change very dramatically. The second one is that when you make strategic decisions in the future, you will do those quite differently compared to how you do it today. And the third one is, of course, related to the boardroom. That I believe that the boardroom, uh, how that operates, will actually also completely change. So these are all changes that I don't think is imminent in the sense that all of it will take place tomorrow. But I think that we will see a gradual trans, uh, transformation where the way we run companies, the way we make decisions, the way boards are running will change quite dramatically. And to kick this off, I'll give a little background on what Meltwater is, so you understand our vantage point. And I will also then try to go through the macro trends that we believe are the root causes for all these changes that we see. So let's start with Meltwater. So Meltwater was founded in Norway in 2001. We have since then become a global business. We are headquartered in San Francisco. We have more than 23,000 corporate clients. We have 50 offices across the world, and we have more than 1,000 employees. And in many ways, I think we are a very well-kept secret. I heard an expression yesterday that I really liked, and that was the Versteckte Weltmeister. And I think we are a little bit like that. Uh, we are by far the global leader in our space in terms of reach, in terms of client base, and all of that stuff. We are much larger than most of the social media analytics companies you've heard about. But we started very humbly. So we started in Norway in 2001, and we started with $15,000. We were two guys in a coffee machine, and our aspiration was to conquer the world. The product vision we had back in 2001 was actually pretty simple. So what we wanted to do was to build a software that helped companies and executives to understand the world better. Our vision was that when executives come to work in the morning, have a normal cup of coffee, Within seconds, we are going to help them understand what the world is saying about the company, what is happening with their competitors, and what is happening with their key clients, and of course, overall trends in the industry. And that was back in 2001. And since then, we have seen a tremendous growth. We have seen the world change quite dramatically compared to maybe even what we anticipated even back then. And uh, today, in a lack of a better word, I would actually say we are a big data company. We process a lot of information. Every day, we process more than 100 million documents. And every day, we do a staggering 2 trillion searches. And the data that we mine is news. We started with news, then we moved to social media analytics. And by that, I mean Facebook, Twitter, basically everything that is publicly available. And our technolo technology focuses on capturing and cleaning the data, enrich the data. We have a proprietary search engine built on open source technology. And then, of course, we have a real-time analytics that help our clients um, understand 
the insights buried in all this data. And over the years, fundamentally, what we have come to uh, realize is that what we do is that we help to track leading performance indicators. So when we analyze a brand and the brand's perception, that is much more than just a marketing metric. It's actually a leading performer indicator on how that company is going to do in the future. And likewise, when we analyze clients, more than just metric for client support and, and, and so on, client feedback today is a direct indicator on how your company is going to perform in the future. And over the years, we acquired a number of clients. So we have more than 23,000 corporate clients. I usually say that if you mention 100 brands, chances are that at least 70% of those brands you mention are clients of Meltwater somewhere in the world. And in Germany, we, have, we are proud to have a number of prestigious companies. I walked in the door here, and I saw SAP, HP, uh, Mercedes, we have uh, Deutsche Bank, a number of uh, clients here in Germany as well. But across the world, we have a wide range of companies, everything from the obvious consumer brands that you would suspect, like Coca-Cola, Nike, Oakley, etc. But also organizations. We have one of the favorites for many is Manchester United Football Club. Uh, another one is Harvard University. Um, McKinsey and Company is another one. And maybe my personal favorite is actually the Vatican. So even the Pope in Rome is a client of Melfoder. So typically, the way I describe Melfoder is that our clients range from Coca-Cola to the Pope in Rome. When we see out there in the market, we see a very big transition. We see a shift in focus from internal to external data. And the way I will look at that or describe that is that for decades, companies have become very rigorous in mining their internal data. Then executives make decisions. They make sure they're data-driven. They make sure that their internal systems, ERP, CRM, business intelligence also, and so on, provide them with information to make good decisions. And there's a German company that has done really well in that space. It's called SAP. They become tremendously large because of the massive need that companies across the world has in terms of analyzing internal data. But fundamentally, if you look at internal data, those are essentially lagging performance indicators. Those are really evidence of things that happened in the past. And the trend that we see going forward is an increased focus on external data. And the reason why external data is so important is that that's maybe the most important source for leading performance indicator. And by leading performance indicators, I talk about some, I already talked about some of them that Meltfer is focusing on. There is a wide range of leading performance indicators that you can actually find in external data. And to, to um, describe it even in a simplified way, one way to look at it is that if you mine internal data, you're fundamentally looking at history. It's like driving your car looking in the rear view mirror. Whereas mining external data is looking at leading performance indicators and the road ahead. And that's why this transition is a very important one and why this will have a big change in the way companies operate. The data is not going to be any less um, going forward. Every minute, there's more and more data being produced. And uh, you probably heard this staggering quote by Eric Schmidt uh, of Google fame. What he says is that every day, no, sorry, every two days, we create as much information as we did from the dawn of civilization up until 2003. Every two days, we produce that kind of information. That is absolutely staggering. So on the internet is really the place where that information is published. That's where all this information is stored. And if you can mine all of that, you can get tremendously valuable business insights. Here's a website that posts job postings. And I'm becoming increasingly very intrigued by job postings. And why is that? Well, job postings contain a lot of really 
valuable business insights. Imagine if you took all the listed companies in the world and you looked at all the job postings these companies were offering, and you were tracking that over time, and you were tracking how much they were hiring, how they accelerate the hiring, or how they reduce their hiring, then you would actually have a very interesting metric that takes the temp temperature of the world economy. If you then move on to break this down by industry, maybe there's a particular industry that you are interested in. If you take all the job postings in that industry and see how that accelerates, or the number of job postings reduced, you have a very interesting uh, index showing all the health or the optimism in that industry. And going forward, of course, you could do the same thing for geos. You can look at the different Bundesland or the different countries, and you can see what is a hiring pattern. Are we hiring more people? Are we hiring less people? And then you have actually a real time indicator on how the economy is doing, or how that specific industry is doing. And particularly if you are a company and want to understand how you are doing compared to your competitors, what should you do? Well, one way to take a closer look is to understand how they hire. How much people do they hire? Which product division do they hire? What expertise do they hire? Do they believe in big data? Are they hiring data scientists? Are they hiring engineers? Or are they hiring a lot of salespeople? Or not? And how does that benchmark with you? And if you take the top five players in your industry and just look at the hiring pattern of those players, you will learn an awful lot. Not about, and the information you get is information that you don't find in the internal reporting systems. The information you will find are leading performance indicators. Leading performance indicators that will tell you something about how the respective companies are going to behave and how successfully they're going to compete in the future. Fascinating, don't you think? And here's something else, it's classifieds. They're, the internet is drowning in classifieds uh, these days. And this is real estate. And if you're just thinking, if you started to aggregate real estate information, and, so, and you did that over time, you can get incredibly valuable information on square footage price per zip code, per Bundesland, per city, and how that is developing over time. And the general real estate market, of course, is also a health indicator of the industry. And that will show you, um, well, that will also be an indicator on how the broader economy is going to further develop. And there are lots of companies, lots of industries that somehow is related or affected by the real estate market. So tracking how the real estate prices are going in real time could actually be a really valuable uh, proposition. So net-net, my, uh, my argument here and one of the basis for my propositions is that all of us today are, living, are leaving a lot of digital breadcrumbs. As individuals and as companies, we leave a lot of digital traces whenever we operate in our lives. And companies do the same. We talked about the hiring, if they change executives, of course, that's available on the internet. If they uh, decide to invest in another market, that, of course, is available on the internet. If you create alliances, that, of course, is available on the internet. If your competitors' clients are unhappy with your product, that is also available on the internet. If a competitor, you launch a new product, what features the clients like? which features peop, uh, clients don't like, that is available on the internet. So the clue here would be, if you then have software that in an, in an intelligent way can mine all these digital breadcrumbs and connect the dots across different data types, you have a phenomenally 
powerful software. And that's really the underlying rationale for these big statements I did in the beginning of my presentation. And because of that, we are convinced that the way decisions are made needs to change. And they need to change quite radically. And there are really three key aspects in which decisions will be changing. Number one is that instead of relying on your internal reporting systems, you will need to add more data. You need to add external data. And for example, if you're a global business, and you discover that one of your competitors is hiring aggressively in the French market, that is something that you can find on the internet, but, but you don't find in your internal reporting systems. And the timing of your decisions will also change quite dramatically. Because in the past, you typically looked at your internal systems, your internal results at the end of each quarter. How are we tracking compared to budget? And based on that, you made a decision. But now, you are forced to make decisions much earlier. So if you use that example that one of your competitors is hiring aggressively of salespeople in the French market, that's the point where you need to act. That's the point where you need to make a decision. How are you going to respond to that? So the timing of your decision, the time with which you enter the arena, has changed. You need to be much earlier in the game. And the third is benchmarking. So companies today are rigorous and very thoughtful of how they mine data internally. But most of those analyses are fundamentally insular. They're all about yourself. But at the end of the day, that is a very small keyhole into the world, because your reality and your future is in large part a function of your competitors. So even if you did really well in one market, if you realize that your competitors is actually doing much better, you are, you are effectively losing positions. You are effectively losing market shares. So benchmarking becomes a phenomenal opportunity. And the interesting thing with external data is that all of that data is third party. So you have the same information on the internet about all the different competitors that's out there. And also that information is objective in the sense that it's not biased by internal systems and processes. So imagine a world where you in real time can compare you can make an apples-to-apples -apples benchmarking of yourself and your competitor on key leading performance indicators. And not, none of these metrics are influenced by your internal systems or your internal processes. They are third party, apples-to-apples -apples comparison. That is a very new and refreshing um, idea. And uh, yeah, you probably recognize this person. That's uh, Gary Kasparov the famous chess uh, champion. And as all of you know, he was beaten by a computer at, uh, at the end. And because of all this increased complexity, you know, all of us need a lot more data support. We believe that because of this increased complexity, there will be a trend, or it will drive a development towards much more data-assistant de decision-making. So we need, in addition to our internal CRM and ERP systems, we need to have a sophisticated big data analytics software that help us understand all these digital breadcrumbs that is available on the internet and how they apply to you, your competitors, and your industry. And we believe that we are on the verge of see a completely new software category being born. It's a completely new software category that will be commonplace in companies small and companies large. And they really grew out. You can find the origin of this industry actually in something as simple as paper clipping. Do you remember the paper clippings? Um, they moved on, uh, digital, so you have online news clippings. And that was the first tiptoeing uh, companies did to understand the world around them. The second generation is social media analytics. 
where you embrace the world in a much deeper way. In social, you can understand the reception of your product. You can understand clients, what they're happy with, what they're unhappy with, unsolicited. And we believe that the third generation of this software is big data analytics. And as you probably understand from our pres presentation up until now, it's analytics that is based on a wide range of data types. It's a plethora of data types. And which data types it will be, it will be a function of which industry that you are operating in. So what are the consequences? Well, to go back to my original premises, to run a company, we believe that you have to look beyond internal reporting systems. And you need to pay careful attention to the world around you and how the road look ahead of you. And when it comes to decision making, decision making will be like running a massive A-B testing exercise. And it's a real-time exercise. And at a much earlier point than decisions were made before, it's happening when events are unfold. And you know what A-B testing is, right? So if you have two alternative options, you basically test it. First you test A, first you, and then you test B. And this is typically for website, for example. If you want your website to be green or red, you can test it too and see which one the clients like the most. And imagine if you in real time need to make those decisions. Say you run a global company. And going back to the example we had before, in France, you know, one of your competitors are hiring aggressively in sales. What do you do? Do you, do you reduce your prices? Do you increase your online ad spend? Or do you act, attack your competitor then in another market where they are weaker? Um, and then, this is how your boardroom will look like. I'm actually joking. Your boardroom will, of course, be much the same, but the boardroom will be aided. Boardroom will be aided in a different way than it was in the past. So one of the most important members of your board will be an analytics engine that benchmark you with your competitors in real time on key leading performance indicators. And we believe that boardrooms that will be really successful will actually stop looking at historic data as the most important deliverable during the board. The most important things that the, that the board will be focusing on will actually be then leading performance indicators. And the historic result is just the feedback as part of the feedback loop. And constantly what you drive is how you are ranking on the leading performance indicators compared to your competitors. All right, in summary, external data is becoming one of the richest sources of business insights. Executives need to look beyond the internal reporting systems. Decision makers will increasingly start to look like an A-B testing exercise. Boardrooms, I believe, are very ripe for disruption and will be heavily aided by real-time competitive benchmark analysis based on external data. And the key thing is actually that his historic result will lose its importance and board will increasingly focus their energy on key leading performance indicators. I will supplement with a quick video. Okay, vielen Dank. Ja, uh, yeah. vielen Dank. <laughs> If you want to know more, we have a stand uh, in Hall 4, A6. 
but I'm also happy to take questions. Yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got a couple of minutes. Any questions from the audience? Besides the fact of, where'd you learn your German? <laughs> yeah? That's not so schlecht. Huh? Yeah? Vielen Dank. I've been in San Francisco. <laughs> I actually used to work in uh, Germany for a period. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. where you when we expanded it to that's the German market. Okay. Any questions? No, because if not, we're going we're gonna to move on. All right. Very good. Well, listen, thank you very much. It was, okay. great, it was a great introduction, too. It was really good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I right, give him a round of applause.